Hey guys, so I'm going to tell you, I'm going to share a story with you um, with a reaction that Naima had to her artwork homework, her art homework, and just how it unfolded and the different life lessons, the different reminders or reinforcements that you can get from, from the story. At least that's what I got. Hopefully you will get the same. So picked her up from school, came home and said, yo, bugs. Let's get down. Let's start your art homework. Art is a beautiful subject, but boy, if you leave it for the last minute, you're going to have to draw, outline, paint, color, blend. And trust me, it's a lot of work in a couple of hours. And so I said, um, let's just start your artwork. And typically, I don't have to micromanage her. I just tell her, yo, I have to start this and she will go and she will, she will start it. I don't know what happened to me, but I dropped like a breadfruit. Fell asleep. Did not wake up till eight o'clock in the night she came to the side of the bed handed me my phone and she said mommy i left you a message so i go on my phone and i see a video message mom i had a meltdown earlier you know but i'm okay i'm okay so i take my phone i go downstairs and i'm like boogs what happened talk to me no i'm looking at the table and i realize that she has one artwork that she has started she drew it she outlined it she already started painting it and it was torn from her art book. And then she had another one that was still in her art book that she clearly redid. She redrew, but had not started painting. So before I even look at the art, we want to know what happened to her. So I said, what happened to you, books? She said, boy, moms, you know, started the work, going through fine, looking at what the teacher did, started to paint. Then she said, by the time I started to paint, I realized that I only drew three waves instead of four waves. And I drew, like you just said, four sunlight, sun, four arcs for the sun rather than three. And she's like, I tried to fix it. And no matter what I tried to do, um, it just wasn't working. And the more it wasn't working was the more frustrated I got. And the more frustrated I got was I just burst out into tears. It's like, I just, I just couldn't, I just couldn't handle it. So I was like, okay. So she's like, I had a meltdown. And she said, I went upstairs and I lie down beside you and I hug you up. But I never want to wake you up because I know you need your rest. But, you know, after I hug you up, I kind of felt a little bit better. And her words, I pulled myself together and I said, okay, you can do this. Regroup, went back downstairs. And so what she decided to do was to nix the one that she, was, she had started that she couldn't fix. And she would redo the, the project. So she was asking, Mom, what do you think about the artwork? So I said, let's, 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 let's stop for a second. We're not even going to talk about the artwork. I said, number one, thank you. Thank you for expressing to me what you went through. Because quite frankly, a lot of the times, your children be suffering silently. Because we as adults, we suffer silently. Things eating us up. We are frustrated. We want to burst out into tears, but we just carry it. We carry the burden. We carry the burden. We carry the burden. And a lot of the times, our children learn from us, right? So I told her, boy, thanks a lot for expressing to me and letting me know how you were feeling in my absence. Because this is important. It is important for me to know when you're not in a good place or if you were in a bad place so that I can, I can address it. I can help. I can add advice, I can offer assistance or offer advice, whatever the case may be. But it's also important because we know that we will not always be with our children. Whether we're sleeping, whether we're at work, whether we're on the road, we just know we won't always be with them every time something happens. But it feels really good when your child can come to you and say, yo, this is how I feel and I feel like this because of that. And for some of us as adults, sometimes it can feel like, but that no, that no really serious. After that, that are not that are not real problem. But for them, as whole human beings, it matters to them. It affects them on an emotional level, and so it has to affect you, right? So I told her, big ups and thank you for expressing how you felt. And I'm really sorry that you had that meltdown. I said, next time, if you're really feeling badly, wake me up. Like, I appreciate your consideration of me, but if you're really distressed or whatever, you're really not feeling good, wake up mommy okay then i said number two let us talk about the fact that you were able to step back i think a lot of the times and holy of us go through this right where you're doing something you're trying to fix you're trying to problem solve it now work out you're getting upset you're getting frustrated you're getting overwhelmed and so everything just starts to play and play and play and we don't know when to step back so we start creating more errors for ourselves i said 
there was nothing wrong with you stepping back, acknowledging your emotions, acknowledge, acknowledging your feelings and then venting. Whether you're venting, whether you're crying, whether you take a, a moment for yourself, whether you take minutes or whether you take hours, you having that ability, right? Empathy towards yourself to understand that this is not working out for me right now and to step back, to regroup, to come back again. Yo, yo, that's bar settings. That is boss settings because we're not saying that you're not going to react to certain things. But what we're saying is don't stay there forever. Rethink, regroup, react a different way. So I say, yo, big up yourselves for that because that, that is, that's, a, that's a life skill. Number three, I said, yo, the idea, just the thought that you would regroup and come back down and then tell yourself, even though I spent time doing this first piece that never worked out, I don't think it's up to my standard because nobody is prompting you. Nobody is telling you you have to do this over, but you decided to do it over on your own accord because you said to yourself, even though this is going to take me more time, even though may I do it over, I think it is necessary. Yo, what do you mean? Most of me, when I look at her first draft doing, I was like, but this look good. And I know for a lot of us, we would have said, yo, but me don't put in my work, my time, my effort, you know, me not do this over, you know. Them look at this them I get. You understand? And if it look good enough to pass, we will then submit or whatever. But I said, yo, the mere fact you are already developing and establishing what your standard is, and it is not predetermined by other people, it is not... Um, as a result of what uh, somebody else is forcing you to do. That's very good. It means that you have your own inner woman or your inner man telling yourself, all right, we can do better. We can do better. This never work out, but we can do better. And I said, that kind of attitude is also a very great life skill to have. It means that you will have a standard that you will keep for yourself, regardless of what other people are doing around you. And lastly, I told her, she asked me, what did I think? Which one was better? And I told her, honestly, I think the first one that you were going to throw away, I think that one is better. I think if you want to create four waves, rub out that line, draw that line, connect that, carry it up. I said, yeah, you do four arcs for the sun. Your teacher only had three. Don't worry about it. The arc between the orange and the red Let's do a red-orange blend. So it goes from yellow, yellow-orange, orange, red-orange red to red. And she was like, okay. And she rub out whatever and she fix whatever and she do whatever. Cool. I said to her, there are many of us who sit down on a problem and we think that we have all the answers and we beat up ourselves and we kill ourselves. We get overwhelmed. We get frustrated. We get angry. We get sad. We go through so many different emotions because we're trying to figure this out by ourselves. But when we ask for help, when we ask someone who we trust clearly for their opinion on a particular matter, you'd be surprised how they can offer you perspective. They can, they can offer you insight that maybe you wouldn't have seen because you are not in the right emotional state. And because she extended the question to me, mommy, mommy, which one do you think? And I say, yo, this actually have better scale and the waves have a better shape and all you have to do is boom, 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 boom. She was able to get the desired result that she wanted. That's another life lesson. We're not going to have all the answers. And instead of we sit down and we kill up ourselves, maybe you figure it out, you know. Maybe you figure it out by yourself. Maybe it's going to take you very long. Maybe it won't make you very productive. Maybe a lot of trial and error. But sometimes when you bring in other people and you ask them what they think, they can actually offer you help that makes you move so much faster. And so I told her, I mean, I told her, yo, your artwork look boss. Like, I'm really proud of you. You did it there by yourself. All I did was guide and suggest, and you took it and you ran with it. So I thought I would share that because I think there are so many different themes in this one little conversation uh, that, that, that spiraled just because she had a very rough time with this particular um, artwork. But we left with a lot of life lessons, and I, I reinforced that a lot of the times. This is going to happen in life, but it's how we regroup. And so I thought I would share this with you and hopefully something resonates with, with you or something that you can, can take away from it. Bye.